Soon after George Osborne announced huge public sector cuts in 2010, UK and Cut decided to subvert his narrative of overspending by protesting against companies that use tax havens to avoid billions of pounds in tax every year. Within months, UK and Cut became a household name across the UK with its unique brand of direct action protests at high street shops and savvy media strategies. Anna Walker has been involved since the very first protest and here she gives some sound media advice and tips on how to up the ante with a direct action protest. I think that you can cut through taking direct action, through encouraging people across the country to take direct action. We have put tax avoidance on the political agenda in a way that no other group has thus far. And I think that direct action has done that because it does grab media headlines, it does give you a platform, it inspires and it motivates people. I think that it's that kind of political pressure where you've got people who are doing something pretty extraordinary that really puts pressure on the government to make the changes that we want to see in a way that a march and a petition never will. I think that's why direct action, I think direct action is about making a bold statement, making a powerful statement. You can cut us out a, a message from, from the start that's been finding a way of creating actions that are taking people out of their comfort zone but also at the same time not hugely intimidating, not for a very exclusive sort of set of activist people. So when you're first starting out for one of your first actions, it's important to have a good sense of where you're going. So when you can cut chose Starbucks as a as a target, a group of people went to have a look at the Starbucks um, in the centre of London. And it's important because it means that you know how big they are. So it's really important that um, people who are in wheelchairs can have access, people with buggies can get in okay. So very at a very simple level, having a shop which has loads of um, empty space near the window is perfect for a protest because it means that you can gather there and be seen from the outside and put posters up in the window, which is great. Um, and it means that you know how to get there, which I know sounds really stupid, but I don't have a brilliant sense of direction and I have got lost on an action. So it's important to know where you're going, how to get there, what it's gonna feel like for people once they're there. You can cut can announce targets beforehand and sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't. One of the more secretive targets was uh, Nick Clegg's house. It comes down to very simply logistics. If you announce your target in advance, there is a probability that you won't be allowed to get there by the police. So one way of doing it is to meet at a place let's say a 10 minute walk away from your target. Only a small number of people know where that target is and publicly you're advertising a meeting point. And then have someone um, who gives a sign such as blowing a whistle um, or umbrellas and then you all can go together. There are lots of different ways that you can stay in the place that you want to be for longer than other people might want you to be there. So we have bands playing, we have comedians, we have uh, people doing poetry and plays about the cuts, um, we have people giving speeches, we have face paints, we have loads of different activities for people. One way of making sure that even though you're not inside the shop, you're not occupying it, you're still shutting it down by basically picketing it outside. And so have all of your banners and your music and all of that stuff and do it outside, do it, do it in the street, do it so people can see exactly who you are and why you're there. And that still keeps the shop shut. So you're still, you're still doing what you want to be doing. I think partly one of the keys to You Can Cut's success has been its use of communication tools. I think that utilising the media to tell people what you're doing, not just politicians or or government or um, corporations, but 
ordinary people who are sitting around their houses um, eating their dinners in front of the six o'clock news are people who I want to be talking to. And the most important things that you can do is even if your issue is incredibly complicated, you need to find a way of making it simple and engaging and meaning something to everyone. So I guess the most important things to remember if you want to get in the media, you have to be doing something interesting and you have to be doing something new. And the clue is in the name with news. And I think a lot of people forget that, um, that if you're just doing the same thing over and over again, it won't be new anymore and therefore it's not news. You need to get your press releases by email to journalists um, at the right time. And that is in the morning before you do anything. And you also need to know who you want to talk to. So in local papers, in national papers, you need to talk to the right people. There's no point in um, sending your press release to absolutely everyone in your local news outlet because there's only really probably going to be one or two people who are actually going to be interested in it. So it's worth taking the time to read the papers um, watch the news um, to find out who is it who's covering your issue and then email them and then call them. All of the news outlets have a central switchboard and you can ask for Paul Mason or Simon Israel or whoever it is that you want to talk to. If they're the people who are covering um, hospital closures um, or health, then they're going to be interested if you're doing a protest about the NHS. They're not going to be interested if you're doing a protest about schools. And local media is incredibly important because constituency MPs care about what their constituents think. And so if there are articles in local papers about protests and also protests about tax points, but also protests about uh, the closure of a local hospital, for example. This is incredibly powerful stuff and that MP will be taking notice of that and that does have an impact on the broad kind of political agenda. Social media is a powerful tool to get people talking about what you're doing, to spread information. Um, Twitter and Facebook and blogs are really vital um, to communicate your messages the way you want to, um, rather than them being quoted out of context in the national media. When UK Uncut started, we didn't put enough emphasis on um, people getting to know each other um, and taking action together with a trusted group of people. We put too much emphasis on, well, Twitter will do that or Facebook people can organize through social media because you've got a group of 50 people sitting in a Vodafone shop on a few Saturdays. It doesn't mean that they're also meeting the following week in a pub or at somebody's house plotting what they're going to do next. They're all going off in their different ways and then coming together um, if there's been a call out going out on Twitter. I think that's something that UK and Cut needs to get much better at is that local grassroots organizing.